Hey guys, this is Mr. Grace for Algebra 2 Unit 1.2 Notes, Day 2. Today we're going to be talking about the average rate of change of a function. Our learning target today is to be able to determine the average rate of change of a function by using the slope formula or the graph of a function. So, what is the average rate of change? Well, for starters, it is very similar. It is just like the slope we were talking about the other day. So, the definition for average rate of change is the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values for two points in a function. So when we're talking about the change in the y values, we write that as delta y. So that's the change in the y. Make sure we're referring to that divided by the change in the x, and for that we're going to write, yeah, delta x, for two points in a function. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to calculate, be calculating the average rate of change of a function for a given interval on the graph. So what we're going to have to do first is first identify the x values. Sorry about that real quick. So uh, I'm going to repeat that. So first, identify the x values. Okay, so we got to figure out the x values that the interval is referring to and the corresponding ordered pairs. Okay, so these ordered pairs are two points. We're going to have to find them. And then we're going to write the reduced ratio of the vertical change over the horizontal change. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Number one says to find the average rate of change uh, of the function over the interval negative 3 negative 2. Now the first thing that I want you to know about this is not an ordered pair okay these are the x values so we need to find the ordered pair so when we go to negative 3 for x so here's negative 3 I'm going to come up and find that point, and that's negative 3, 4. Okay, so my ordered pairs, my first one is negative 3, 4, and I have to find my other one at negative 2. And there we go. So it's negative 2, 3. So what I need to do is take the change in y over the change of x. All right, that's just like the slope. 3 minus 4. 3 minus 4 is negative 1, OK? Now the bottom, I have negative 2 minus negative 3, or negative 2 plus 3, which gives us 1. And all of that together gives us negative 1. OK, so what we're doing, I'm going to show this to you one more time. We're going to write it down here. I took the change in our y's, so 3 minus 4 over the change of our x's, the negative 2 plus 3, okay? And that's how we get that number, okay? Maybe it's going to be easier if we do it the entire time. And we can tell that the change of that is negative 1 because from those two points, we are going down, okay? So let's, let's do it again. So find the average rate of change over of the function over the interval negative 1, 0. Remember that these are x values, OK? I really want to stress that those two are not an ordered pair. So those are not an ordered pair. Those are our x values, OK? So. This time we've got the points negative 0, so at negative 0, or negative 0, there is no negative 0, Mr. Rice, negative 1, okay, 
I'm at negative 1, 4, and then at 0, you're at 7. Okay? So my ordered pair we said was negative 1, 4, and 0, 7. Okay, so I need to check the change in y's, which would be 7 minus 4 over the change in x, which would be 0 plus 1. Okay, so 7 minus 4 is 0, minus negative, that's why it turns to plus, and so 7 minus 4 is 3, 0 plus 1 is 1, and 3 divided by 1 is 3. Okay? So those are our answers. All right, let's try it again. So find the average rate of change of the function over the interval negative 1 and 0. And remember, once again, that what are those? Yeah, these are our x values. So we have to find the points. So at negative 1, I think that's 3. Okay, so negative 1, 3. And then our other point at uh, 0. Here we go. That's 0, 1. So let's find the change in y over the change of x. So I have 1 minus 3, and then 0 plus 1. On the top, 1 minus 3 is negative 2, 0 plus 1 is 1, and then when we reduce that, we get negative 2. Okay, so this is very similar to what we were just doing, except now you have to find the points yourself, because all they tell you are the x values. Okay? Um, at 1, it looks like our point is 1, right? Or am I looking at the wrong one? Yeah, that's 1. Okay, so we have the ordered pair 1, 1. And at 2, we're all the way at, it looks like negative 3. So once again, the change in y over the change of x. We have negative 3 minus 1 and 2 minus 1. So negative 3 minus 1, we get negative 4. 2 minus 1 is 1. And then when we reduce that, we get negative 4. Okay? Like, uh, Mr. Grace, what's this negative 2 and negative 4 business? Well, if you look at our first two points, we are going down 2, okay? And then our next two points, we are we're going down negative 4 to get there, okay? So that's our slope, the rate of change, all right? So 4, 3. Find the average rate of the change of the function between negative 2 and negative 1. Once again, these are x values. Okay? So see if you can find the points and do part A by yourself. Good luck. Okay, so I got negative uh, 2, 4 and um, negative 1, negative 4. And then on the bottom would be negative 1 plus 2. Okay, remember we want to find where it intersects. Okay, so 
some people might have said right there, but no, that's not the real point. You can see that's where it crosses. Okay, so uh, negative 4 minus 4, we get negative 8, and negative 1 plus 2, oops, sorry, that's uh, negative 8, Mr. Guys, and negative 1 plus 2 is 1, and when we reduce that, we get negative 8. Okay, and we can tell from there to there, we are going down. Okay. Okay, letter B, once again, go ahead and pause the video on your own. Okay, so I got the point negative one, negative four, because we just did that one and one negative four. Um, and I got zero over two, which makes our slope zero. Well, that's weird. We'll look at our two points. Okay. Our two points are right here and right here, and there's no change. Okay. Those are on a horizontal line between those two points. So that's why our rate of change is zero. Okay. Let's do one more. So the average rate of change between 1 and 2, the interval 1 and 2, and once again, those are x values. So go ahead and pause that video, and good luck. And remember, the point is right there. That's 2, 4. Okay? Okay, and for that, I got a positive 8. Okay? So between those two points, if you look at it, we are going up. All right, so D, what did you observe about the average rate of change of the function over the intervals negative 2, negative 1, which is right here, and the points 1, 2, or the interval 1, 2? Explain why that would happen. Well, what do you notice? One's negative 8 and the other's positive 8. So the reason why, or first off, what I notice, hopefully you're noticing the same, that those are opposite rates of change, right? Do you guys at least see that they're opposite numbers? Good. And the reason is that is due to the symmetry of the function of the function, okay? So since that is, uh, we could probably see the line of symmetry going through right here, and it cuts the, um, the function in half, and we can see that they're mirror images. That's the symmetry, okay? And it's just how that function works out. Other functions will be different. All right. So calculating the average rate of change of a function for a given interval in function notation. So find uh, first identify the corresponding ordered pairs that the interval is referring to, then find the rate of change using the slope formula. Okay, so um, we were pretty much doing that on the other side because we were finding the change, we were finding the difference of those points. Okay, so our function f of x equals negative x squared plus 8x minus 14. Find the average rate of change of the function of the interval 2, 3. Okay, so 2, 3, and we've got the point f of 2 equals negative 2. Remember, we were talking about our x and our y. So that's going to give us the point 2, negative 2. And our other point, so that was my blue point, and now my other point is going to be 3, 1, okay? So when we're taking the y and the x, okay, the change in y over the x, it's got 1 minus negative 2, so that's going to be 1 plus 2, and then I have 3 minus 2, we get yeah, 3 over 1, which reduces to 3.
Okay. So find the average rate of change over the function of the interval, 4, 6. Remember, those are our x values. So we've got our two points right here. And those would be the points 4, 2, and 6, negative 2. So when we're finding the change in y over the change of x, We've got negative 2 and 2, and then we have 6 minus 4. Okay, so negative 2 and 2 we're going to get negative 4, 6 minus 4 is 2, and then when we reduce that we get negative 2. Okay, if you're noticing at different points, because this is the same function, we're getting different rates of change. And that's normal. Okay. Number five. We've got our two points, which is negative five and four, and negative three, negative four. So when we're plugging that in, the change in y over the change of x. On the top, we have negative 4 minus 4, okay? And then on the bottom, we have negative 3, and that changes to a plus 5. So negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. Negative 3 plus 5, we get 2. And when we reduce that, we get 4. Okay, why don't you guys do part B on your own? Pause the video, and good luck. Okay, so we had the points negative 2, negative 2, and negative 1, 4, and after plugging that in, we end up getting 6. All right, number 6. Let's see if you can do both of these on your own. All right, go ahead and pause the video, and good luck. Okay, so there's all the work. You should have gotten 4 and negative 2. Okay, so just remember to set your points up. Okay, so at the last one, we have 7. Okay, so you guys are all on your own. Go ahead and pause the video and good luck. Okay, I'm not going to show all the work to that, guys, because we've been doing it for a while. You should just look at your examples above, um, and you should have gotten the points 2 and 4, or the points, the slope of 2 and 4, the rate of change. Okay, now, if you look down here, those are our functions, okay? So if we look at the last one, I'm just going to go to 6. We had the points negative 1 and 4, that was h of x, so h of x is right here, so negative 1, 4, so negative 1, 4, negative 1, negative 4, it's right there, 0, 0, and you can see the changes going on down here, okay? All right, guys, well, this is Mr. Grice signing off for Algebra 2, Unit 1.2, Notes Day 2. If you have any questions, please come see myself or Ms. Carranza. We would love to help you out. Otherwise, this is Mr. Grice signing off. Thanks for watching.